One of the things I do for a living is teach young people science in their homes and they tend to like anything about light. Most people know you can find the colours of light in a rainbow and that you can use a prism to split light into its colours as well. Well you can also split light with something called a diffraction grating. These do it better and they're cheap and easy to find. I can easily take one of these to a student's home and show them the different spectra from a sunny window, a fluorescent lamp, LEDs and other light sources. Now another of my interests is indoor growing at the moment and um, I bought a book called I think LED Grow Lights um, and it talks a lot about the spectra of various light sources and what plants need um, to grow properly in terms of wavelengths and energies across the spectrum um, and it also talks a lot about how manufacturers descriptions can't be trusted. Now having recently got myself um, one of these diffraction gratings um, I got to thinking that you could actually make your own spectrometer by using a webcam to look at the spectrum split out by a diffraction grating and if you could calibrate the picture from the web webcam then you'd have a high quality or an accurate spectrometer which with which you could verify the claims of the various manufacturers or more likely for me verify the quality of the various LED emitters that can be had so I can build my own grow lights well as is the way of things these days, if um, if you can conceive of it, it's probably been done and there's probably a YouTube video about it. Um, I didn't find a YouTube video but what I did was Google webcam spectrometer and I came across a fantastic website called Theramino and in that website they give instructions on how to build a spectrometer and they give away free a piece of software which enables you to analyse the spectra which are delivered uh, from the web cameras images into your PC so it takes those images and analyzes them so you've really got um, for not much outlay and not much effort um, a very usable spectrometer so I said about making one and that's what this video is about I've got loads of old webcams and they work fine on Vista and XP but they and they also work on uh, Ubuntu, but they don't work on Windows 10 and I can't get them working. By the way, if you know how to get them working, do let me know. In the meantime, I've just argosed one of these. It's a, a, a trust webcam, cheap and cheerful, 10 quid, not as cheap as I'd hoped actually. Um, and I'm just going to see if it's suitable in a couple of regards. Firstly, I need to know that when I've stripped it down the um, the webcam continues to be focusable is that focusable at all? yes it is and um, I need a way to rotate it when it's in the spectrometer and the second thing is that I am able to locate and remove the infrared filter without causing trouble to the rest of the camera so the form is fairly straightforward look for screws, there's a screw in there and there's a screw in there, so let's take that one out first. And now we'll actually get into it and see if we can see where the infrared filter is and whether it will break out in a friendly way or not. So take that off. Okay. So now we can see what's inside. Here's the microphone. This LED will come off, we can't be doing with that. This is the lens on its focusing ring. And that will come apart. You can see the sensor, I don't know if you can see the sensor, but the sensor is right at the bottom there. This camera probably won't focus close enough up. But uh, the, image, the, image sensor is, the image sensor is down there, it's about 3 millimeters square. This is the lens, and there is the infrared filter. I'm now going to smash it out. I can see a little dob of glue there. Remove it with acetone. So I'll get uh, one of the big sneakers I've got here. Let's see if I can get in the corner. Each corner has got a little circle. Almost made as though it were to do this. Ah, I've got under. Look at that. 
I don't know if you can see, but I've lifted it as a piece. Okay, we're done with the camera. We've taken it out of the case and we've removed the infrared filter from the back of the lens. So we're ready to start building the rest of the project. Well, the rest of the project is really just this box. Um, you may recognize it's a box file. The, uh, the long um, edges are made of chipboard and the um, front and back are made of cardboard. There's a square hole cut in one end which will hold the, um, the slit through which light will come in. Um, and that's pretty much it. I need to find a way to mount the camera board inside the box in a way that's um, adjustable. I had one of these small brackets which is used for attaching kitchen units to the wall. I decided I would hot glue that to a piece of board and then use a bolt to attach the camera to it. Then it was time to think about positioning the camera assembly inside the enclosure. In fact I turned that bracket round so that the pivot point was underneath the camera's lens. Although it means you have to take the lens housing off before you can access the mounting bolt, it does mean that when you rotate the camera you don't change its axis of alignment with the slit. OK, long story short, I finished the um, spectrometer and it works so well I might actually build one properly but anyway you can see it's basically a a square, t square cross section tube. Um, on one end it's got the um, the slit which is a piece of cardboard and on the other end there's an end, there's an exit and if you look at what's inside I've spray painted it all black um, I've left it quasi open like this to um, allow me to make modifications inside slit one end, webcam at the other across the lens of which is a diffraction grating which is um, 1000 lines per millimeter just held in place at the moment with some masking tape sprayed black to minimize um, stray light inside um, there's some foam uh, gaskets at each end which allow the thing to shut and be reasonably light tight uh, like that and believe it or not that is all that's required to get me spectrograms, uh, graphs of spectra, which are accurate to within one nanometer. So that's really good. Let me show you the software. So you plug the spectrometer and you fire up the software, you waggle it around and this is what you see when you point the thing out of the window, like that, you see a spectrum like this. and. Um, you see the spectrum on the screen and you see a histogram showing uh, the distribution of brightness across the screen and this thing's got some bells and whistles on you can have the naked curve this is just the intensity of light read from the web camera at this on this particular strip of its image um, if you click colors then it will project onto that an inference about the wavelength of the light at that place on its image remember the lights coming from the diffraction pattern so its angular uh, displacement is proportional to its wavelength um, but this needs calibrating um, because uh, w this, this software doesn't know the precise geometry of the webcam how long the uh, the device is the optics of the webcam lens the angle that it's at the and so on bits and pieces so various physical aspects of the spectrometer so we need to tell it about those things and one way you can do that is you can set look at some trim points um, let me show you on a, on a web page how that works here's a web page with two possible spectra from uh, fluorescent lights um, and you can use these characteristic peaks to calibrate the device so that's what I'm going to do now so going to point the, the spectrometer up at the fluorescent light if I can get it up there right so let's look at the spectrum we've got on the screen 
and compare it with one of these reference spectrums and I think you can see that it's not this one it's this one this is the one the reference in the book and this is extremely similar so what we have to do now is drag the reference lines to correspond with what we see on this reference graph so we're going to operate we're going to pull the 546 to the middle of the green it's already in the middle of the green this 546 is in the middle of the green there and then there's another characteristic line at um, 463 sorry 436 here so we need to pull this oh look that's already on it as well so this is now calibrated and we can expect that as we move the device to look at various different things um, the spectrum that's revealed to us on the in the software is representative and we can test that approximately anyway by using this laser which uh, is 650 nanometers nominally it's a red laser and they tend to be around there they can be 637 but let's now see what that's reading so we'll push the uh, white balance control on and this should collapse everything except the there is the laser and it's reading at what 600 and um, we'll take the trim off and then we'll actually read the value peaks 639 so that laser according to this spectrometer is transmitting at 639 uh, nanometers which is interesting okay so turn that off <coughs> What else can we do? Well, we've got one of these, which is an insect zapper. And let's plug it in and see what the um, see what the spectrometer reads for output there. Oops. Let's see what we can do. Oh, that's interesting. 524, it's radiating in the green. But also, this is what we're interested in, the ultraviolet. So let me turn the automatic gain off. Again. Actually, that's not correct. It's blue uh, because it's blue light. If it were UV, it would be black. So the spectrometer is saying that this lamp is not really emitting any significant UV radiation. And now I think about it, that uh, makes sense because this was a cheap bug zapper and it never zapped any bugs. Now I know why. Now let's also get this infrared panel. Let's get the data point from this infrared panel. I don't know what voltage it starts to come on at. But we'll start low and go up steadily. Oh, that's quite annoying. Okay, so that's three volts. Yep, so there's that. Now we'll see if the. Uh, set. Um, there it is. Isn't that wonderful? So I've turned down the uh, power to this transmitter. Uh, actually, I've turned the transmitter off entirely. So now I'll per turn the transmitter on. And immediately you can see the infrared there. And I'll increase increase the power. And we see a huge zonk of infrared energy there. Turn it off. Turn it on. I just think that's wonderful. We can't. See, there's nothing to see here, and yet it's happening. The, the, it's magic. It's magical. Glorious. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that's that. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know how you think um, I can improve it. 
and um, if you did enjoy it I'd really appreciate a like and if you want to see more like this of course subscribe okay thanks for watching